harvest we reap. We are the harvest we reap. We are the harvest we reap. We would appreciate it. And I've been asked to keep talking. That could be dangerous. <laughs> could really be dangerous to tell a minister to keep talking. <laughs> so, so when I was two years old, <laughs> and then. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the prayers. We have sound again. So. Again, thank you for joining us. Let's join together in prayer. Hmm. Just taking that moment to take a nice deep breath and release it, releasing any thoughts about what has been, what is yet to come, and anchoring ourselves in that present moment where we can remember and feel our connection with that one life, that one love, that one infinite goodness that is God, that nature out of which everything is created, that nature that lies at the center of all that is, including each and every one of us gathered for this virtual service this morning. I absolutely know that God being present in all beings and all things is absolutely present and unfolding throughout our time together this morning. I just feel that vibration of God's love in which we are all interconnected, whether we are together physically or not, we are still interconnected on the unseen side of life. I just give thanks for how that vibration of love operates through all of those who are of service to us this morning. I know that we are all inspired touched by that music that we hear today, spirit flowing through Karen, Sam, our soloist Tina, Dean as he leads our chants. And I'm going to give thanks right here, right now, for the healing and revealing that comes to us through Dr. Mark's message today. I know that he is that vessel through which spirit speaks to us and awakens us to that divine essence of our being so we can express it more fully and experience it more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks for every blessing that we receive in this service this morning. And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it's already so in the mind of God. This service is blessed, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. You are the face 
peace of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of And so now, let's join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now let's join together and sing our congregational song, Make a Joyful Noise. Make a joyful noise. Lift your voices to the sky. Joyful noise to your source and your supply. Celebrate as one, grateful for this time we share. Celebrate as one, unified as we declare God is love. God is love. Let's come together in consciousness as we get still and meditate for the next five minutes and remember that truth of God being love. So for the next five minutes, I invite you to get still in your bodies, close your eyes, and silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
It's dark as the night She could see into my soul Said she'd been watching And had some advice She said shadows make you whole A life without pain Is a wolf in sheep's clothes Cause if you listen to the lessons that it holds you'll find the gold a child it's time to break the shell life's gonna hurt but it's meant to be felt cannot touch the sky from inside of yourself you cannot fly until you break the shell well I can remember I was a child Now the grown folks seemed so crazy Why are they so angry? Why are they so loud? And when I grow up that's never ever gonna be me That was the moment That I would build a wall just shy of six feet tall, too strong to fall. Oh, child, it's time to break the shell. Life's gonna hurt, but it's Oh, 
Time for us to be for real. Will you be stuck on the ground till you finally break the shell? Nice, nice, nice. Thank you so much, Tina Meeks. Wonderful. Well, good morning. Thank you for being here with us today. It's Valentine's Day. Holy cow, Valentine's Day. So to start, uh, happy Valentine's Day. I'd like to share with you a little poem called Love by Emmett Fox. Emmett Fox was an Irish New Thought leader in the 20th century, and a lot of his work he was doing during the Great Depression. So I think it's really interesting. Uh, his stuff is fantastic. So listen to this. There is no difficulty that enough love will not conquer, no disease that enough love will not heal, no door that enough love will not open, no gulf that enough love will not bridge, no wall that enough love will not throw down, no sin that enough love will not redeem. It makes no difference how deeply seated may be the trouble, how hopeless the outlook, how muddled the tangle, a sufficient realization of love will dissolve it all. If only you could love enough, you would be the happiest and the most powerful person in the world. Well, that sounds good to me. My topic today is love is the answer. So if love is the answer, what's the question? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, love is the answer. So I thought I would talk a little bit today about relationships because I haven't done that in a while and that's always kind of fun, it stirs the pot for people. Um, being involved with others I think is one of life's greatest challenges and also one of life's greatest joys, right? Relationships, uh, wow, what an opportunity to learn about ourselves because nothing is a better mirror than being in a relationship with somebody and we learn all kinds of things about us. So I think a good relationship is comprised of lots of things, but some of the main ones for me, I think, are mutual respect and appreciation and kindness. I think these three are enormously, enormously important. Perhaps they are the most important qualities of a good long-term relationship. Uh, these qualities can be and often are more critical for the long run than even love itself. If love means respect and appreciation and kindness, then love is critical. So too often, what we define as love, I think, is, um, shows up as neediness in our culture. You know, if what we call love is really need, masquerading as love, then it will not produce a very good quality of relationship. So then why have a relationship? Well, to challenge ourselves, to grow, to develop, to have a companion on life's journey to experience the ups and downs and everything in between with. This growth and development, I think, can't take place in uh, a scary or a threatening environment. Thus, a good relationship provides uh, a safe, secure, nurturing, encouraging place in an otherwise zany world <laughs> in which we can be ourselves without any pretense. I think that's an enormously important piece. We are allowed to express who we are, our feelings, uh, to make mistakes, to experiment, to take risks, and also be nurtured along the way. In addition to providing support and nurturance, a good relationship also provides, I think, uh, stimulation, uh, encourages us to be the best version of ourselves, and often gives us a good kick in the behind. Um, in the United States, we've been taught that romantic attraction 
uh, and, and even addiction to the other are the critical components for a relationship. It has taught us that the purpose of having a relationship is to get our needs met through the other person. I think that's incorrect, I'm sorry. You know? The only way to get past this training is to, recognize, is to recognize that the first and most important relationship that all of us have is with ourselves. All of your other relationships will follow from that. You can never have a better relationship with someone else than you have with yourself. It's just not possible. No one else can love you the way you want to be loved. No one else can fill your needs. It's not their job. Wow, doesn't that sound contrary to lots of stuff we've heard again and again and again? See, here it is. There's, there's two really big things I see here. We cannot love someone else if we do not know how to love ourselves, okay? And the second is, if we, we cannot accept love from another if we don't realize that we ourselves are worthy of love and being loved. Now, you are lovable and worthy because you exist, because you are part of God. That's what makes you lovable and worthy. It is not based on behavior, what you did, what you said. It's not based on anything external. Please hear that. You are lovable and worthy because you are made by God. And because you're part of God. I just love that. So to have healthy relationships with others, we have to first have take, we must have first have taken care of our own needs, right? Because a good relationship has to be clean, right? There can't be, um, it can't be just a bunch of needs all cobbled together and illusions and expectations. It, it is, I'm interested and I'm accepting of where you are. And I'm here to be encouraging of you, you know, to whoever that is, whether that's your romantic relationship or your friendships. Yes, it means caring and sharing and supporting and understanding other people as they are and not interfering and trying to change them. You know, when people tell us who they are, we don't believe them. And I think that's a mistake. When people tell us who they are, we should believe them. And then the next step is, to watch, because people always show us who they are. I believe our desire to be in relationship with other people is, is a call from God, that we can't not have relationships here on earth, right? And so being in a relationship, being, being our authentic self in a relationship frees us to love ourselves and others more profoundly than we have ever experienced before. There's really only one relationship from which all connections generate, and ultimately, at the top of the pyramid, that is our relationship with God within. We explore and experience our relationship with God as we experience life and, and connect and join with another person. So the spiritual truth, you know, is that it looks like there are lots of us here, and you're over there in your body, and you're over there in your body, you're over there in your body, but spiritual truth is we are all connected on the unseen side of life. That means that there's only one of us here. And as people endeavoring to live the spiritual life, our goal is to look beyond the surface appearances. That's what our teaching is all about, to look beyond the surface appearances to a deeper spiritual truth, to the light of God, the light of Christ that exists in every single person. You know, being in relationships with others shows us all the unhealed places in ourselves, places in us we have not yet learned to bring love there yet. We have not yet learned to bring honoring there. We have not yet learned to bring acceptance to that part. <clears throat> I think authentic relationships free us to love ourselves and others in just a more expansive, full way. Now, I want to say right up front, I don't think being in relationship is better than not being in relationship because, again, on earth, we are all in relationship with lots of people all the time, right? But so if you are single, I think that's perfectly fine. If you're coupled, I think that's perfectly fine. Here's the thing. Your path is your path. This is what your path looks like right now. 
And if you feel like you want to be in a loving relationship, well, I think that God has placed that desire within you, and I think that's absolutely available. That is absolutely possible. Everyone has their own unique karmic predicament, right? And so we all have to listen carefully to hear our path, to hear our dharma. The, you know, there is no better or worse. There's just different. You know, we sincerely listen when we ask, is this getting me closer to where I aspire to be spiritually? Is this getting me closer to where I want to be in my life, in my experience? Is this really my path today? See, because what is right for us, I think, always moves us closer. I believe an open heart, that's a good thing. That gets us closer. I think uh, an authentic heart, yeah, I think that's right for us. That gets us closer. Just like having a clear heart and a full heart, if you are alone, I have discovered that there are three fallacies that people who are alone often succumb to about the power of relationship. <clears throat> and so bear with me for these three. And the first one is, if I could be involved with someone, my sense of isolation would vanish as if by magic. Well, <clears throat> I think this is not the case. If you've ever been in a bad relationship or an unhealthy relationship, one where you are not authentic, you know there is no more lonely place in the world. Being in a relationship will not cure loneliness. I know a lot of people, I'm certain, when COVID is over, will be changing the status of their relationships. Yeah. Um, and that will be really interesting to see because I think that this time has allowed a lot of people to have some introspection and really look at, um, is this what I want? Is this serving me? Is there respect, appreciation, and kindness here? Is that respect, appreciation, and kindness? Is it a two-way street? And so some people will be coming into relationships and some people will be going out of relationships. The second big fallacy is if I could be in a relationship, that would cure my sense of brokenness. <laughs> I call this the Humpty Dumpty approach to love. Yes, that's what this is. I've fallen, I'm in pain, I'm in pieces, and I'm relying on other people to put me back together again. We discover it is not in their power to do this. Nobody can fix you or me but us and our trust in God. The third fallacy, I find, is that if I'm in a relationship, that will guarantee my happiness i.e., if I could find the right person, we will always be happy, to which I say, what planet are you living on? Okay? Now, uh, just stop reading those Harlequin romances and get real. Yes, a companion absolutely can enhance our sense of joy, but they cannot create what does not already exist. Hear that. A partner, a relationship is not going to bring something into your life that doesn't already exist. Nobody can love you more than you love yourself. Nobody can give you what you are unwilling to give yourself. We must all remember that all the time. And what that does is that takes the unhealthy onerous off relationships. Like, it's your job to fill me up. It's your job to complete me. Look, I'm broken. Hold me together. That doesn't sound good, does it? It really doesn't. Nobody wants that. So, we have to build a solid foundation of joy within ourselves, a solid foundation of joy upon which a relationship can grow. Otherwise, self-doubt and self-loathing and insecurity will sooner or later find a way to destroy that fragile, tenuous happiness you thought could be bestowed on you by another. I'm sorry, that sounds like such bad news, but it's not really because what it does is it brings it all back around to it's within us. Yes, if only we could be in the right relationship, we would not be lonely, we would not feel broken, we would always be happy. Plainly, these assumptions are just not true. So if we would stop telling ourselves things like this, we would find that all of our relationships could rise up a little bit more to an even healthier level. I understand if you happen to be lonely, you may want to really have a partner. And I totally support you in that. I think God has somebody for everybody, absolutely. But a person will not fill the emptiness. Really, they won't. A person will not fill the emptiness. What we have to do, all of us, is work on our relationship with God, work on remembering, knowing all the time that we are one with God, and what that does is that will bring us closer to our dream 
of more love in our life, of perhaps a relationship with another individual. See, working on your relationship with God may not immediately make the change you want in your life. It may not bring somebody into your life today, but it will change the way you perceive your longing for love. I think what will happen first, and this has to happen, is you will like you more, right? There's this, um, I read this, that every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around. And boy, I love that. That's one of the things in Science of Mind I love, that any moment we can start again. Because before relationship with another comes, the relationship we have with ourself. You have to like being with you. If you don't, think about it. If you don't like being with you, if you don't like your own company, why would somebody else think about it, right? So we must do the spiritual practice of loving. Loving self, loving others right where we stand. Now, you can say, well, I love my family, I love my close friends, I love this one, I love that one. Not just the easy ones, okay? There is no growth in loving the easy people. There is no growth in loving the people you already love. The growth comes in when we say, oh, I'm going to stretch my heart a little more and just accept and appreciate this person here. See, because authentic love, real, real love is unconditional. You handle your issues however you deem fit. And I'm going to handle my feelings however I deem fit. But our emotional well-being does not hinge on the behavior of other people around us. Our love is unconditional, but our physical presence in relationship, eh, that's kind of conditional, isn't it? <laughs> and so people have often asked me, they say, well, you know, it's bad. It just seems unhealthy. Look, if it's toxic, you got to get out. That's what I would do, but... You know, everybody has to follow their own internal guidance system. Maybe a way to proceed is ask yourself. When you sit for a moment and close your eyes and say, what gives me life? If you're in a relationship, does being in that relationship give you life? Does it add to you? Does it lift you up in some way? Does it give you more energy? Does this relationship expand me? Does this make me want to be a better person? See, these, I think, are the great questions to ask if we're desiring to be in a relationship or we're looking at our current relationship status. We all know when we feel expanded by an experience, but we also know when we feel contracted, when we feel diminished, when we feel squashed or made small or less than. Let your aliveness, which I think is the presence of God within you, your aliveness is the spirit of God within you, let that lead you because that's authentic. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus talks about how to get to the truth of yourself. And he says the way to do that is to practice. Practice loving God, practice loving other people, even practice loving yourself, I think is what it points to. I think it's why we're on earth, to practice loving. I suspect that probably early on in life, many of us had to perform to be loved. You know, and we did whatever we thought we had to do to gain acceptance. We learned to look outside ourselves and, and developed uh, our external sense of loving. But you know, Mother Teresa said it very, very simply. She said, we are all tenderly loved by God. And I think that's so great. I just think that's so beautiful. Think about that, that you are right now, as you are, tenderly, tenderly loved by God. Love doesn't come from outside. We can never get enough love from out there, right? It just isn't going to happen. So three things I think could really help us love ourselves. Because I know that's a very kind of amorphous thing, loving ourselves. It's sort of hard to get a handle on that. But the first one I would say is feel our feelings, not thinking feelings. What do I think about my feelings? But to really feel what you're feeling. The second thing is to tell the truth actively and persistently. You know, to be willing to go to a deeper place. Because the truth, you know, the truth without compassion is brutality. It is. Right? So tell the truth actively and persistently. And the third thing that I think will support us in loving ourselves is to develop a willingness to make and keep clear agreements. 
This is where I see people fall down on agreements, is people don't do what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it. And that sounds really simple. Just do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. And that cleans up so much about agreements in relationships. See, the chaos in your life where the chaos in life is so often where we haven't done what we said we would do when we said we would do it. I realize that's a lot, but this is what I think it comes down to, and it's what I started with today. Emmett Fox, you know? If only you could love enough, if only you could love enough, you would be the most powerful person in the world. Happy Valentine's Day. Let's pray. Thank you. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to just recognize and remember that right here, the place whereon we stand is holy ground. We are surrounded and filled with an energy of love and intelligence that we know is God, the living spirit almighty. It's the truth about each and every one of us. We live, we move, we have our being in a sea of infinite God, infinite good. And in this awareness of our oneness with God, I further know and affirm that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And so I speak the word for each and every one of us that we are filled to the brim and overflowing with love. That love, the love of God, is what we are. And we are here to give that love to each other lavishly, abundantly, in ways that are healing and joy-filled. So I know for each and every one of us today that if our desire is to be in a relationship, that that is on the way. And if we are in a relationship, I know for each and every one of us, we are cultivating greater love, respect, appreciation, and kindness in all of our relationships. So we include in our prayer today family members and friends, parents and children, loved ones near and dear. And we see them in our mind's eye and we surround them with a mantle of God's peace, with a mantle of God's love. And we claim for them healing and wholeness, all needs met, we let our prayer be a blessing in the world in which we live. And we declare here and now that love is the power that heals our world in every way. And that love moves through each and every one of us out into the world in ways that magnify the best in each other. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And so it is with an open, gracious, full heart that I give thanks for our time together today, for joining in consciousness, for this realization of truth that always makes us more and more free. And with that, I release this word into God's perfect law. I know it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to place your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. As always, it's great to be here. 
I look forward to the time that we can be together and that we can hear the songs and sing the songs together. Love, share our love. If ever I was called to lead the masses, what kind of revolution would I lead? Before I change the world and take some action, I'd have to change the world inside of me. Now everyone has got their own opinions on how to rearrange the other woman and man. But if we see the our fists and lend a hand cause just like Martin we have a dream and just like Gandhi we want peace like Mother Teresa we want love courage to rise above. Many dreamers paved the way before us. Yet it seems that we have just begun. If we could look beyond
<laughs> oh, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Tina. I just had flashbacks to my ordination because uh, I'd heard Tina sing that song years ago. And I remember running up to her right afterwards saying, you have to sing that at my ordination. And she said, well, when's that? And I went, well, I have to finish ministerial school first and then serve for a few years, but, but you have to be there. And she was. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> and that is from her album, We uh, Have a Dream. And you, pardon, Joy of Living, that's right. Joy of Living, and it's on her website. TinaMeeks.com. So, let's see a few announcements for you. Oh, and also, let me say thank you to our accompanists here, Sam and Karen, as always, and to Dean, who's been leading our chants. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, donations. If you would like to make a donation over the phone after service, just call the church office, 818-762-7566, and we could take your donations for about 30 minutes after service, and that would be via uh, credit or debit card. Also, you can make your donation online at nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to the donation page. You can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419, and of course, you can continue to mail your checks in if you uh, prefer to give in that way. However you're continuing to support us, we can't thank you enough on this day of sharing love. Love back at you, thank you, so we can continue to do this together and all grow in consciousness. Uh, speaking of growing in consciousness, prayer with the practitioner is available after service on Zoom. Just ask your Zoom host, uh, to connect you up with a practitioner in a private breakout room where you can receive prayer. You can email your prayer request to us at prayer at nhcrs.org or call the office and option four allows you to leave a voicemail message. Uh, and we check those voicemails and emails every evening and send those requests out to our practitioners. So you will have a lot of people supporting you in prayer. Uh, let's see, Wednesday evening. So we'll be having our Wednesday evening service. The meditation starts at 6.50 and serves itself at 7 p.m. Same links on Facebook Live and Zoom as uh, we use for Sunday. And my topic this week is staying on track. Our grief support uh, group that is led by practitioner Carol Winokur, who just does a masterful job of coaching people through this grief process. They meet today at 1 p.m. on Zoom. Living a Course in Miracles, led by a wonderful Jeannie Laporte practitioner. She will be leading that this Thursday at 7.15 to 9.15. Again, that is on Zoom. Also, please be aware we are having a memorial service this coming Saturday, the uh, 20th, for our beloved practitioner, Scott Vance. Uh, the information for that is on Zoom. All are welcome to join on Zoom. And uh, just so you know, for those of you who are planning to join, the family is wanting to open the ceremony with having everyone who's participating light a candle. So please have a candle ready that you can light at the beginning of the service uh, in your setting. Our annual meeting is uh, for members of the North Hollywood Church and will be held next Sunday, the 21st at 11 a.m. So that's right after the Sunday service. And again, that's happening on Zoom. The Zoom link uh, is the same link that we use for the Sunday and Wednesday services. So. Uh, just be sure to join us. If you're a church member, join us on Zoom next week uh, so you can be counted for the quorum. A notification uh, email was sent to all members. So if you didn't receive it, please check your spam folder, your junk folder. And um, if you don't find it there, you can call the church office. And uh, I'm sure Terry will give you the information you need. We look forward to having everyone there for our, all our members there for our meeting next week. 
So again, next Sunday, right after service, 11 a.m. Our Zoom virtual patio is always uh, open before and after services. So if you want to visit with your fellow congregants, join us 20 minutes before or stay on after service. And uh, we also will, us, those of us who are uh, part of the service, uh, Dr. Mark and I today, Reverend Aideen, Reverend Sidney might be able to join us. We're like, we like to be there to visit with you afterwards. The men's group meets every Sunday at 11 a.m. to 11.30. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues every Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. Hope you can continue to join us for these different events. Information, where would you find it? If you're wanting to join for the first time, nhcrs.org. And you can also sign up for our weekly blasts and monthly newsletters there. So with that, thank you again for being with us this morning. Happy Valentine's Day. Let's all stand and sing the peace song. Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs>